Okay, we're back here inside the Cube. This is Silicon Angle's flagship program. We go out to the advanced extracted signal from the noise. We're in Las Vegas. This is day two. That was the back end of day two of three days of live wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante at wikibon.org. And uh, I got to say, we go where the stories are and there's a lot of action. We just talked cloud, now we're talking storage. Dave, what's your, what's your take here and choose our next guest? Well, so uh, we're seeing a lot of enthusiasm uh, from HP. We heard Dave Donatelli this morning. Uh, I, I tweeted out, John, that Dave was relaxed, he was concise, clear, and funny. You know, it's you not got a lot really, of retweets on that. Yeah, did I, it's, <laughs> I think I did, actually. But, uh, <laughs> so, and our next guest is, is, is great. Milan Shetty is here. He's the Vice President and CTO of HP Storage. Milan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. So it's John. Good to see you. We, I just saw you recently. We did a, a deep dive uh, on the, the announcement that you guys made today, which was awesome. We, you like, locked us in a room for eight hours and injected us with Kool-Aid. <laughs> we came out, we were still alive, but uh, so great announcement. You guys are very enthusiastic about it. So we're going to talk about you know, that, you know, the three-power all-flash array, some of the other innovations uh, that you guys are doing, but again, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Uh, uh, thanks again for having me here. Yeah, so let's start with the, uh, the, the announcements uh, today. Uh, the all-flash array, it's been anticipated. You guys sort of indicated that's the direction that you're going. Um, we heard Dave Donatelli today talk about the trade-offs that customers had before you guys came in. So why don't you recap that uh, from a strategy standpoint, what you guys are trying to solve there. Sure, um, so when we look at the, um, the, the, uh, the fact that the new media flash has come into the marketplace and it's a magnitude of order, much faster and got low latency than the disks, and um, what, how would people use it? And that's what we have been thinking about that from an innovation standpoint quite a bit. And there are three things which uh, came to mind uh, when we did all of the investigation. First is that um, how can we apply tier one features on Flash uh, and, and get all the data services uh, on the Flash stack uh, so that uh, people don't have to worry about uh, the endurances aspect of the Flash and also get the maximum performance they can from the Flash. So that was one aspect. The second aspect of it was um, that uh, the man, the, you don't want, it, it's not all about just the performance and the latency. How, uh, how, do, we, how do we address the feature sets uh, which go along, which people know about the tier one functionality and, and get that going. And third, how can we make it cost effective and also provide the resiliency and the cost factors as well as the endurance factors and how do we balance those equations. There are, um, so we saw in the marketplace there were pure high speed performance, you know, having like a uh, race car, but no features at all, no rear view mirrors and uh, no tier one features, a new management paradigm, that kind of a uh, marketplace going on. And the second, there were people who had the two controller node architectures um, and they were just inserting flash in their existing architecture and it was not performing as well. So the question was that uh, uh, how do we inter, uh, how do we bring in a multi-node architecture, improve the efficiency of the multi-node architecture in terms of getting the best latency as we can and provide all the tier one services, snapshot, replications, and just name it, which we've been, uh, we, we've been delivering on our platform for a very long time and how do we put all those three things together was a key element and that we brought that with the announcement which we did uh, today. So, or that, so that's what you mean by features. You're talking about a rich storage management stack that you've built out for you know, a decade because uh, you know, the, the, the startups can say, hey, we have features, we have compression, we have deduplication, uh, maybe some will say we, we OEM a, a stack from another uh, you know, third party. So double click on that a little bit. What uh, features are we talking about? Absolutely, so, so if you look at uh, when people talk about, uh, about the endurance of the flash and everything, right? So, so we have thin provisioning capabilities built in into our three-part stack, right? So, uh, so first of all, uh, don't do as many writes un unless it's necessary. Provision, uh, in, the, in the process of provisioning, don't do writes to the uh, flash array. Then we have thin, uh, thin reclamation and the uh, thin detect capabilities that if we detect the, there are a bunch of zeros, we don't even send that to the uh, array at all. So we, we minimize writes. So it's all the data reduction techniques which uh, already existed. Then, uh, then there are richer services around snapshot, cloning, um, and white striping of three par so that they can make sure that all the I.O. goes across more than two controllers. So it's a four controller architecture, eight controllers, uh, scale out architectures and just spread the load around across all the resources available so that you write fast, but not only write fast, but write only what is needed uh, and absolutely needed. And that along it's the life of the endurance and it's all built in. It's all built into the package and it also, uh, and it's the same software stack from an architecture standpoint, for on high-end array, the low-end array, the 7200, 7400, the mid-range array, as well as the all-flash array. So getting that uniformity of management, 
and also these rich data services which already do uh, data reduction techniques uh, so that you're not wearing out your flash are very critical component and we built that all in the controller and now it's available in the all flash array. But so you guys made uh, a, a, a lot of momentum in the marketplace, created a lot of momentum around the notion that you had a modern architecture. I mean, you attacked yeah. traditional tier one and, and really did a, a very good job at that. But so people are going to look at this and say, well, wait a minute, Milan, you guys, this is a disk-based architecture. You designed this to solve the problems of spinning disk and now you're bolting on flash. What so, do you say to that? Yeah, absolutely. So, so we supported SLC and MLC drive, uh, SLC drives in our in our uh, three-part stack uh, for a very long time. The, mm -hmm. What is unique about the 7450 platform, which we uh, released, is that we actually optimize the three-part stack uh, to make sure that it treats the media as if it's a, as a different media than the disk. So we optimized a whole bunch of stuff in the uh, how the internal buffers are allocated, how the uh, the fly, uh, how the uh, how the IO stack works on the SCSI layer, how the IO stack works on the fiber channel layer. There's a lot of software, and I would, I would go to say there is about, about uh, somewhere around 500 to 600,000 lines of code yeah. in the software stacks, which are the standard software stack, right? Yeah. The fiber channel stack and the iSCSI stack, which are not needed in Flash. So we optimize the entire code path. So when we released the Flash optimized 7450, there a lot of work went into not only on the multi-node architecture stuff which you can leverage, but also optimizing the stack so that the IO paths, it's not like a wide, wide, uh, wide well, I use the analogy of the white water rafting, kind of the, the, your data is going back and forth between the different buffers and different buffers between the fiber channel stack, the, ice, the SCSI stack and down. So we optimize that entire code path, which is why the latency which we are getting is um, is one of the best latency we are getting from the read standpoint and the write standpoint. It's only going to get better. So that optimization, to your point about the uh, whether it was a, uh, fla uh, whether Flash is used as an um, as, a, as a different media and all the algorithms which existed and all the IO paths which existed in the standard fiber channel stacks and the stack, uh, and the and the SCSI stacks, we optimized all of that. And that's about half a million lines of code path which has been optimized, and which is why we're getting the throughput and the latency which we're standing behind. And the spec numbers which we drew out has been um, has been the best in the industry, uh, which we came out of it. But but again, to summarize, it's the optimization of the code path uh, in the in the in the standard for protocol stack uh, without the applications knowing what's happening has been very free to uh, how we delivered these numbers. Now another point that we debated, um, and and you know, well, let's sort of have a summary of that debate here was the cost. Right, so you got this architecture, got an ASIC in it, a lot of benefits to the ASIC, uh, but it's not a blank sheet of paper architecture. It's not a scale out shared nothing architecture. We had that kind of interesting discussion. <coughs> uh, why are you confident that you can compete on cost with the, the startups? Sure, so so there there is an, um, so so first of all, I think the uh, all the primitives and the design uh, Design center which 3Power was built on. So, right, if you if you look at the history of 3Power, right, 3Power is built for the storage service providers. So, a lot of the stuff which we, we talked about, that was the that was the genesis of the service provider. I said today that yeah. I have three the 3Power red herring on my in my office, and I go back and read it every now and then. It's all about utility. And, Absolutely. You know, with, but if you look at the characteristics, package. right, and, and it was built for the service provider. And if you look at the characteristics of what people were looking for, the service provider was they want to have that thousand customers, two thousand customers, ten thousand customers, all going to the uh, same. Array, right then, they were they wanted high up, uh, uh, high high IOPS uh, at the time. They also wanted low latency. At the time, they also wanted guaranteed and sustained latency, mm -hmm. right? And uh, so, if you look at all the characteristics which the storage service provider or the uh, SSPs wanted, they are the same characteristics which Flash as a media requires. So, so what happened was from the from the design standpoint and the day one designs of the three part standpoint, it was always optimized for, so we, we released a feature called the priority optimization, right? You can guarantee IO bandwidth and uh, latency to your multi-tenant, uh, to each of your tenants, right? And uh, it was already built out of the multi-tenant architecture. So, uh, so this was a ground up design for how the IT was going to be in future. Right, whether it was a virtual server, whether it was a physical server, or uh, whether it was guarantees throughput IP, uh, and or the latency which is required from the stack. So, which is why it was very much more easier for us to adapt to Flash because Flash, Flash as a media is an more or less an adjacent uh, requirement to what the service providers always needed. Uh, so, which is why this this architecture, the work we had to do was an incremental work. To, uh, to get the flash as a media, and most of the work 
had been around. We didn't have to change the core mesh architecture or anything. What we had to do was just optimize the standard protocol stacks to make sure that they don't spend time um, waiting for IO to be sent out to the media, and which is why we got the numbers which we got. Now, the there are, to your point about the scalar architectures, right? There was the... Uh, I'll <laughs> try to get a question, don't worry. Yeah. Continue, yeah. you're on a roll. Uh, so, the, the scale out architectures, right? One of the one of the problems when you have is a shared nothing architecture. This is the, the three parties and shared all architecture, right? In a shared nothing architecture, every time there is a shared nothing architecture, there is a trade-off which uh, which folks uh, necessarily don't realize is the shared nothing architectures have to do some kind of data protection scheme, and generally that data protection scheme is replication to a different node or something. So every time you do that, right? So you are reducing your latency by half. You are getting your capacity utilization. Uh, you're suffering your making capacity copies, yeah. making copies, right? You, your capacity utilization, uh, utilization went out the door. Your latency is now half. Your bandwidth has been shrunk. And you know, um, and if there are uh, some scalar architectures, actually keep three copies of the data. So, so all of those numbers, latency, bandwidth, and the throughput, just gets worse two times or the three times. And not to mention the rich services which you talked about. So it's an inherent disadvantage. The pure scale out, non shared or shared nothing scale out architectures have. Okay, well, we're running out of time, but I'll get one question <laughs> in. I think that's a good conversation. I don't want to interrupt that, but um, I wrote a post yesterday in Forbes. Um, well, Dave Donatelli and uh, Craig Nunez in the headline. Uh, I couldn't get David Scott, he was just so busy. He's been busy all week uh, meeting with customers. I asked him the question about why is software defined storage so hot? Uh -huh. Donatelli's comment was, Storage is an operating system now. So, and then he went on and on some of the comments. Go to Forbes.com and search on HP if you're interested in, in reading that post. Um, but I want to ask you, in, in short, to end this segment, why is software-defined storage so hot? And what does Donatelli mean about storage as an operating system now? Sure, so um, the uh, folks who are the, say, let's say, a first-time sand buyers, folks who have outgrown their direct attached storage, but not yet ready to make a um, wholesome investment into a full sand fabric, or folks who have been using, uh, who want to have a backup strategy, but not yet ready to go to and dedupe up appliances and everything. There, there is a transition path for them where they can use their internal disks and be the first time sand buyers, or be the first time dedupe buyers, uh, and they eventually grow, um, uh, eventually grow from there into an external attached storage and uh, external attached YouTube appliances. So what software-defined storage provides um, is a bridge for folks who are transitioning, or not, not only the enterprises which are transitioning, but also small and medium business which are transitioning from a direct attached model to the external storage model. So that bridge never existed in the past, and, it, and that's what the, um, Store virtual VSA and the store ones VSA provides them to transition from the internal uh, internal storage to the external storage. And that's that's why software defined data center is uh, hard. And as Craig Nunes said he's going to come on the cube shortly uh, today, and um, or, uh, I think he's coming down today. But he saw you take back it's a whole new paradigm shift. Yeah, it's a whole new rethinking. So. Software defined storage, there it is. Big announcement yesterday We're from the HP Storage 3 Park, continuing to lead the transformation with great products and performance, and on the business side, very profitable, um, growing within under the HP uh, Donna Deli uh, group in the enterprise. We'll be back with more coverage here shortly after this break. This is live from HP Discover the SiliconANGLE, Wikibon's The Cube. We'll be right back. <laughs>